Jocko, regarding mistakes, what are some of your own and some you've seen made by leaders you've looked up to and how to recover? Can someone ever fully regain trust? This is actually a pretty easy one because, um, <laughs> look, if you make a mistake, own it. Uh, the, the worst thing you can do if you make a mistake is try and avoid taking blame for it. That's the worst thing you can do. And if you think about the bosses that you've had and you had some boss that made a mistake and he's like, no, it wasn't my fault, you just totally lose respect for him. So you can't do that. You got to take you got to take ownership of it. Um, it cause, and if, again, if you think about the bosses that you've had and the times that you had a boss that made excuses, you don't have any mercy on them. Mm-hmm. You're just ruthless on them. Mm-hmm. You just pick them apart. Mm-hmm. So that's step number one is, um, you know, take ownership if you make a mistake. And that's how it's always seemed to me from as I looked up the chain of command you know, if I saw a guy that made mistakes and then he took ownership of them, I'm like, okay, cool. The guy's, you know, he knows he made a mistake. Cool. Well, we'll support him. If they're doing the other thing and they're blaming everybody else, they're not taking ownership. You're going to have a hard time with it. And as a matter of fact, I actually had a mutiny in, in one of my platoons where this is a long time ago. It's, you know, all the names are long since forgotten, but we had a, we had a, a mutiny in our platoon where we said, you know, pretty much us, us lower enlisted guys, we had a, we went to the, we literally went to the commanding officer and said, we don't want to work with this guy. Dang. Yeah. So, you know, all these ideas that people have of the, you know, military and of, you know, we obey orders and all this yeah. stuff. I mean, think of what a little jackass I was. We, you know. <laughs> We say, well, you know what? We don't want to work for this guy. We're going to go to the commanding officer and tell him we don't want to work for this guy. Mm -hmm. And the commanding officer, to his full credit, he was like, listen, guys, you can't have a mutiny. Not at my command. Not at my team. You guys suck it up. You figure out a way to work it out. Go do what you're told. Get in line. Oh, so the mutiny didn't work. And then he fired the guy. <laughs> yeah. No, but he, he like basically made it perfectly clear, like, this is your one chance. Mm. And he fired him. Dang. But it was, it, was, it was pretty crazy to see, to see it happen. But, and I say this all the time, it wasn't because the guy lacked tactical skill. It wasn't because he wasn't physically fit. It, most of the reason was because he just couldn't take anyone's you know, advice. He wouldn't listen to anybody. Mm. And so when he was making a mistake, it was like, no, no, we'll do it this way. No, mm. it's okay. Constant cover up for himself. Mm. And obviously it, it didn't work out for him. So your mutiny sort of just put him on, put him on notice. That was his write up essentially. Yeah. But I think the commanding officer, I think was really just doing the right thing saying, look, guys, you can't have a mutiny. doesn't work that way. This is the military. Right, Get right. back in there. Do what you're supposed to do. And then he was like, okay, i got to fire this guy because yeah. he must not be good to have every enlisted guy in the platoon come forward and say, I don't want to work with this guy. Yeah, yeah. That's not a good sign. Yeah. So the commanding officer did an outstanding job, and he was actually a great, great commanding officer too. So it kind of worked on the DL kind of It thing. worked on the DL, yeah, I guess, yeah. as Echo would say. And then I actually, the guy that took over was one of the best guys I ever worked for, if not the best. Dang. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Um, and then as far as regaining trust, which is the other part of the question, it's almost as soon as you admit that you made a mistake, you are automatically regaining trust. That's where you start yeah. regaining trust. Yeah. And it just goes from there. Then you follow yeah. through with what you say. You know, you're constantly trying to build trust and relationships. That's what you're trying to do. And the minute you're lying to people, how are you building trust? Right. And if you make a mistake and you say it's not your fault, then that's a lie. And everyone knows it. Yeah, that that fear is, um, especially, not especially, but in regards to regaining trust, so to speak. Um, You know, when someone admits mistakes, they have that fear that, oh, they're going to think I don't know what I'm doing or I don't have a handle on this, you know? So doesn't matter. It so doesn't matter. It's so much better to go, hey, guys, I don't really know how to do this. Can you show me how to do this? I'm not sure. I've never done this before. Right. Or, hey, never, I've never used this kind of weapon before. Can you give me an, an in-dock on this thing? Right, right. The worst thing you can do is step up to the line with a weapon you've never used before and not know how to <laughs> lock and load it or clear and safe it and look like a yeah. total idiot. Because then you look do. like a guy that is too arrogant 
and too insecure to ask. Yeah. It's actually it's actually a sign of insecurity if you can't ask when you need some help with something. Yeah, and it's funny how when pe- when people are in that position and all kind of just this is kind of a general thing to know is that you're you come off way more transparent than you think. You know how people will like I don't know, something just as small as like name dropping. <coughs> if you name drop someone, right? Even or you just mention this person's name but you're really name dropping even in a small way. Yeah, yeah. Like people can smell that. Yeah. So even like this stuff, stuff that's a little bit more important where if a leader's insecure about something he wanna makes yeah. like he knows everything but he really doesn't. I hate when I do stuff it's, like that. I know, but and it, yeah, I hate you, when I do I, I hate when I do stuff like that. I, yeah. I'm like, oh God, yeah, I'm such a loser. Right there. And it's transparent. Everyone everyone knows yeah. it. And a lot of people, bro, they're not in touch with that. They think that, oh yeah, they don't know because I'm just going to sort of mention it. And there's all these little things that it's just, you just reek of. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to put it like that. I want to, I'll just say, like I said, you're way more transparent than you think. Yeah. You know? And transparent in this day and age actually has a positive connotation. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. But people view, oh, he's a really transparent guy. You know, right. he really just tells you what's going on. If you're deliberately and transparent. you're using it in a negative way saying, right. look, people can see right through your, exactly, your yes. BS. Yeah, yeah. When you're long. not trying to be transparent. Right, right. There's a big difference there. Yeah, and totally. Uh, totally true. But it is definitely better just to you know ask and say hey i don't know that insecurity the, the when you don't feel like asking something that's a little knock at your door that yeah, says oh yeah. you're insecure <laughs> <laughs> you're insecure yeah, yeah when you're like hey you know what i don't know how to do this can you can you give me a hand with this or hey i'm stuck on this problem here can you can you give me help with this because i don't know how to do it mm-hmm. people don't say oh this guy's an idiot unless you're doing it every three sentences because right, that means right. you haven't studied yeah yeah because you got to study you got to know your trade you got to know your craft <laughs> And if you, you don't, do. you got to sure. learn it. Yeah. You know, you got to break out the books and mm-hmm. get on it. But once you've broken out the books and now there's a little bit of stuff that you still don't understand, well, guess what? Right. Just ask the question. Yeah. Because your frontline troopers are going to know more than you. They should know more than you. Yeah. You know, this it's highly likely that they don't know more than you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was a radio man for eight years in the SEAL teams. And by the time I was a lieutenant commander in a troop, I didn't know as much as those, you know, guys knew about all the new radios and stuff. So I just had to ask a question. It's no big deal. Yeah. If you're secure in your leadership, you're you're fine to ask a couple questions. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But you are not clear to lie to people. You're mm-hmm. not clear to make excuses. And that's what that's how you regain the trust is by telling people the truth. <laughs> it's really a simple concept. Yeah.